I'm Tori Andreas, and I'm a broadcast journalism major here at Biola. And I'm going to talk to you about how I've leveled up my journalism skills through my passion of playing video games. So for most of my life, I've had to deal with my parents telling me that playing games is a waste of time. And of course, no one wants to hear that one of their passions or favorite hobbies in life is a waste of time. And even if you know your parents mean well and just want you to finish your homework before 3 in the morning, it still kind of hurts. Of course, I'm sure it's easier for someone who wants to be a video game programmer or a designer to tell their parents that spending nearly 9 to 10 hours a day playing video games isn't a waste of time for them. But for me, I didn't really have that dream. To be honest, I'm not too great with numbers and studying calculus in college seemed like a way too frightening thing for me to imagine myself going down that path. So, as I was about to graduate high school and I was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do with my life, these three magical words somehow came together for me. Video game journalism. So, of course at the time I didn't really know what that meant. I knew that there were magazines like Game Informer that I'd been subscribed to for most of my life, and I knew that websites posted articles and reviews about games, but somehow I didn't really feel like this was for me. But as fate would have it, senior year of high school, my best friend convinced me to join our school's televised weekly news broadcast called Rev Week, much like Eagle Vision here at Biola. Through this experience, I realized that I loved editing videos. I loved putting together footage and I loved finding engaging content and making it creative and fun for the viewer to watch. And this is what helped me to choose broadcast journalism and why I'm here in front of you today. Now typically, when you think of broadcast journalism, you think of someone who's extremely confident in themselves and loves talking to people and being live on television. But, the, but that really isn't my thing either. <laughs> so the great thing about journalism is that there's so much you can do with it. And over the past few years especially, I've fallen in love with eSports. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what eSports are and why it's so important for me as a journalist. Esports stands for electronic sports and can be defined as a form of sports where the primary aspect of the sport are facilitated by electronic systems, which is basically a fancy way for saying competitive video games. I've gotten a lot of mixed feedback from many of my friends on esports, especially people who are athletes themselves. While I am a gamer, I've also played other sports for most of my life and even swam on the Biola swim team with a scholarship for two years. But I am a firm believer that eSports will continue to grow and eventually become more widely accepted as a competitive sport and become more prevalent in our lives and society. In fact, the numbers alone speak for themselves. Let me give you some statistics. In 2014, over 205 million people watched or played eSports. This basically means that if, e were, if the eSports nation were actually a nation, it would be the fifth largest in the world. There are now more than 28 million eSports fans in North America and Europe alone, and that number is growing by 21% each year. In 2015, the global eSports revenue was over $612 million. The game League of Legends alone made $1 billion in microtransactions in 2014. Twitch, a video streaming site which is used to live stream game tournaments as well as home broadcasts of video games, also has users or 55 million users. So obviously there's a lot of people who care about this and a lot of time and money are being spent into expanding this industry. So this is where I come in. And being a broadcast journalism major, I'm sure you can understand how exciting it is for me that networks like ESPN are now broadcasting esporting events on television as well as online. And this brings up one of the most valuable aspects of gaming that I can relate to journalism. And that is how it helps you to form connections to many different people and places all around the world. When video games were first invented, they were obviously very limited. When, my, when I was little, my brother and I, or my mom bought my brother and I our very first Pokemon games. And to be able to play together, we had to connect our handheld Game Boys with a cord that was no longer than three feet long. I remember how ecstatic we were when the wireless Game Boy adapter came out, and that allowed us to play with each other without being physically connected, even though we could still only be about 10 feet or so apart. It was still a huge step for us. In the games that I play now, I can easily connect, play, talk, and strategize with people from anywhere in the world within a matter of seconds. By using new technologies in game like voice chat, instant messaging, or matchmaking systems, I'm able to collaborate with people and form connections to accomplish whatever my in-game goal may be. I believe this is directly related to journalism in that the industry is really all about using resources and connections to accomplish your goals, whether it's working as a team or with the, comp or with the company you're working for or the public that is viewing and receiving your work. By just merely being able to communicate effectively with your teammates and coworkers is only half of the battle. The most important part of communication that I've learned through video games and journalism is making your communication matter. 
The world today, especially the online world, is flooded with communication, and according to the American Press Institute, the vast majority of this communication is not news, and especially not journalism. Almost 70% of email traffic is spam, and in 2012 there were an average of 175 million tweets each day, but 99% of them consisted of pointless babble. And this means that in being a journalist, ensuring that I know how to communicate with my audience and giving them important information through my communication is of the utmost importance. In video games, you'll oftentimes only have a split second to communicate with your teammates about what your plan is going to be in the game. It's so important to be able to effectively get your point across as quickly and efficiently as possible. When it comes to communicating information and truth, the web has become the go-to place for this, especially when it comes to visual communication like videos and graphics. Over 1.8 billion people now have social media accounts, and since 2013 alone, 50% of Facebook and Twitter users have used these platforms to access news. During my internship last fall, I took over the social media platforms for two companies. While working with them, I realized how valuable it was to be able to focus on important information and to create visually appealing graphics for my audience. That's why, in this time when people are being flooded with so much information via the internet, I believe it's essential for journalists to be able to look at something that may seem chaotic and pick out what's important and what is truthful and what the audience needs to see and know. Oftentimes, video games can seem chaotic and like an overload of information as well. So I'm going to show you a few seconds of what a team fight looks like in the game League of Legends. So as you can kind of see, there's definitely a lot going on here. And I'm sure most of you probably have no idea what's really happening. But don't worry, because let me tell you, when I first started playing this game, I didn't really know anything that was happening either. <laughs> but through constantly practicing and gaining a better understanding of the game as a whole, I'm now able to look at that team fight and under understand exactly what's going on, and even more specifically, what exactly I can do while playing as my character to do whatever I can to make the outcome for my team better. Much like journalism, being able to connect to what's important and share it with an audience is a learned skill. And I believe that in honing this skill through video games, it's helped me to become more critical in my thinking, writing, and creation of news and stories. And this brings me to my second point, which is persistence. I didn't get to be where I am today in video games or journalism without pushing past difficulties and challenges. Many times the hardest levels in video games, the levels that I've spent hours upon hours trying to complete, have the most valuable outcomes and rewards. A lot of games will even give you optional quests you can do along with your main quests that are typically much more difficult to complete and take a lot more time and energy. But a reoccurring theme that I've found in my journalism work is that there are oftentimes side quests or extra steps that I can choose in making a segment, editing a video, or even getting an interview. If I take the time to go out of my way and do them, then oftentimes the finished product will be much more rewarding and far superior than anything I could create otherwise. A specific example of this for me would be while working with editing software like Final Cut Pro, I could spend an extra 40 minutes or so fine-tuning the audio to make sure it sounds better, or even in attempting to obtain interviews. I've, turn, I've been turned down and rejected many times by potential interviewees, and oftentimes when this happens, I just want to be like, well, I tried, what more can I do? But um, if I apply my video game logic to this, then it helps me to push forward. In games, if you give up when something is hard, then you cannot progress with the story. It's literally impossible. And similarly, when you do persevere and continue to push onward, you'll be instantly rewarded. I like to apply this way of thinking to my work in journalism. If I give up when things are hard, I will never be able to progress or get better. But if I continue to work hard, I believe that my efforts will pay off. I believe that in completing these difficult quests throughout my life while playing games and working on my journalism skills, I've been able to instill in myself a mindset of being persistent and going above and beyond to ensure quality work in other aspects of my life as well. And in fact, a video game designer named Jane McGonigal actually talked about how gamers how when gamers are in the gaming world, they're the most motivated to do something that matters. She says that they're inspired to collaborate and cooperate, and that she believes that people become the best version of themselves, the most likely to help at a moment's notice, the most likely to stick with a problem as long as it takes, and to get up after failure and try again. And that has been one of the most valuable lessons that I've taken from my time spent playing video games, and one I can apply to all aspects of my life, but especially in my journalism career. And I'm sure that in looking at this list, many of you people probably wouldn't associate these things with gamers. And I'm sure that that could be because of stereotypes that many people believe about gaming and gamers. 
And this leads me into my final point which that I've learned through video games and that is breaking down stereotypes and having the motivation and drive to be able to look for the truth and view things as what they really are and then convey that to your audience. So a stereotype can be defined as a widely held but fixed and oversimplified image or idea of a particular type of person or thing. And these can be extremely harmful, especially in the field of journalism. Stereotypes emerge when people are either unwilling or unable to obtain all the information they would need to make fair judgments about people or situations. And as we've established earlier, communicating truth to our audience as a journalist or is a journalist's most important part of their job. A common stereotype for gamers is that most of them are males. And oftentimes, people will actually tell me they're surprised to hear that I'm a gamer because of this. But if you look at statistics, of the 190 million people playing games in the US, the stereotypical gamer, which most people would think of as boys and men between 10 and 25, only make up about 15%, and 48% of gamers are females. In experiencing stereotypes throughout my life of gaming, I've been able to un better understand that things are not always as they seem. Even when it comes to something as simple as hearing someone say like, what, you're a girl, you can't play video games, I've learned how to deal with stereotypes when I've come across them, and how to break these down and look for the truth behind them, and then communicate that truth to others. This becomes especially important when looking at journalism through the lens of a Christian perspective. In Ephesians 4.25, it says, therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Especially when it comes to reporting news, I believe that it's extremely important to paint an accurate picture of whatever it is you're covering. For example, even in covering religion, many journalists focus on what they only believe to be newsworthy, and typically this tends to be negative when it comes to Christianity, and this often paints a negative stereotype of Christians. Hardly will we see stories on mainstream media about how a church donated to a certain charity or how they did something to benefit the community, yet very frequently we'll hear about how they don't support certain liberal movements or they'll, find, they'll cover a scandal happening in the church or on a Christian campus. And while I do believe that these things are important to cover and should never be hidden, I also think it's extremely important that the public knows the full and entire truth about whatever they're reading or watching. To not give them this would be going against what Ephesians 4.25 says. And for in being members of one another, as journalists, we must paint an entirely accurate picture of the truth to our audience and fellow members in Christ. Overall, there are many things that I've picked up on in playing video games that I apply to my everyday life. From working with others as a team and communicating truths to an audience, to forcing myself to stay optimistic and persevere in dire situations, video games have definitely crafted who I am as a person, and as well as many of my skills and proficiencies that I've used in my journalism career. Gaming has helped me learn that to grow, I need to constantly challenge myself. I've learned that if I continue playing the same levels over and over again, I never truly grow into anything more than what I currently am. In journalism, this can be seen as not being afraid to take risks. To apply for that job you feel like you have no chance in getting, because with practice and perseverance, someday you eventually will. I've learned the value of progression and how exciting it feels to be able to look at your lower level self and see exactly how far you've come. In video games, there are clear markers telling you that you're a higher level than you were before, but I think that journalism is also very obvious to tell the progress you've made in the quality of your work as well. Working towards these goals in both real life and video games has helped to give me a sense of my purpose during here, my time here at Biola. I hope to continue gaming and to one day work in the video game industry, helping to share my passion of video games with those around me through my journalism skills and breaking down barriers and stereotypes to reveal the truth to those who see my work. So thank you for your time and I would now like to open it up to any questions you may have. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Let's wrap the fire.